Okay. The Chief Medical Officer, Paul Kelly, has uh, just, just begun his briefing. Let's have a listen. I think that's really important. We need to remember the difference that we are in in Australia compared with the rest of the world. So in the last 24 hours uh, across the world, 697,000 cases, um, recognising that in many countries we don't know how many cases there are, but they're the ones that are recorded officially, um, and almost 11,000 deaths um, in, in the world in the last 24 hours. The situation here in Australia, again, a, ca a day of no community transmission and no deaths. Uh, a double zero day. Um, so that's that's where we are. Since the start of the year, we've had 62 days. That's 61% uh, of the days in this year where there has been no community transmission. And it's been nine days since we had a community transmitted case um, in uh, in the community. So that's that's where we are. We are. Uh, and uh, the other, uh, and what does that lead to? It leads to Australia essentially being open. Uh, as of today, Victoria is open to every other state. Um, WA uh, still has some restrictions in relation to Queensland, but by next week, uh, assuming everything stays as it is now, um, they will be open. Uh, we can go to the footy. <laughs> uh, many, many places around the world, you can't do that. Um, so uh, people are allowed to go about, about their business pretty much uh, back to pre-COVID times. And that is because of the public health response we've had here, here in Australia since the beginning of, beginning of the pandemic taking into account new information, um, taking that into our planning and our response uh, and being nimble uh, when things change. And so what's happened over the last few days, people have, have certainly heard about the, the safety concerns that, that were expressed by uh, the medical expert group, ATAGI, um, the uh, vaccine, uh, the immunisation uh, guiding group for uh, the Minister for Health, um, who, who have alerted uh, us uh, uh, the Australian Government and the AHPPC that I chair um, about this matter with these extremely rare but uh, serious uh, issues of blood clots. And just to be very clear, I was talking to my, my, my colleague here about this just now, um, about the clotting. This is a very specific uh, clotting. This is a brand new disease um, uh, in relation to this matter. Uh, so these are not the usual blood clots that are very common that we get in our legs or in our lungs. Uh, these are particular types of blood clots, almost certainly related uh, to an immunological response to the vaccine itself. Uh, and so very rare, somewhere around four to six per million, uh, but can be quite serious. And so that is why that advice uh, last week about uh, AstraZeneca, particularly in the under 50s, um, uh, that there was a preference that uh, another vaccine should be used other than AstraZeneca. Um, and so that was the information that was given to us uh, by that expert group on Thursday around 7pm. Uh, uh, within 15 minutes, the Prime Minister, myself, uh, Professor Murphy and, and Health Minister Hunt were, were uh, talking about that with the Australian public, giving that information. Um, since then, even that evening, we gave uh, information out to, uh, to doctors and other vaccine providers uh, in the community so that they were able to have that very important uh, and detailed discussion with their patients, balancing that risk and benefit equation between uh, the vaccine on one hand and prevention of the seriousness of COVID disease uh, on the other. And that is something that's not unusual. That is what uh, doctors do every day uh, in relation to all vaccines, all medicines, all medical procedures. Um, none of these things are without their risk. Uh, this is just another thing to consider and to take into that conversation. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the vaccine continues to roll out. Um, as, of, uh, as of Friday, we reached our one millionth dose. Um, and so at, as of uh, yesterday, 1,178,302 vaccines have been, have been distributed around Australia, including um, 473,000 in primary care, 142,000 in um, aged care, uh, and through our state and territory partners, uh, almost 561,000. Um, yesterday there was a daily increase of 12,227. Uh, that um, uh, that's, was, a, was a, a Sunday number, so you wouldn't expect that to be large. But um, in previous days before that, um, they were much higher. Uh, we'll be looking very closely and carefully about uh, what influence um, the, that AstraZeneca um, uh, announcement will make in relation to those numbers through the week. But um, 
anecdotally, at least, uh, we know that many, many of our, our GP colleagues, and particularly the GP respiratory clinics that we have uh, a direct relationship with in the Commonwealth, uh, have seen some people uh, cancel their, uh, their appointments, but a very small number over the weekend, very small number. Uh, and um, there is certainly a lot of people still wanting to get that, that vaccine. Um, my main message, so we are now looking to recalibrate in relation to that, uh, to the vaccine rollout uh, on the basis of this new information. Um, but in the meantime, uh, you know, my message to all Australians is please, if you are in that 1A or 1B priority group, uh, continue to roll up to your vaccine provider, uh, roll up your sleeves and get the jab. Um, make sure that if you have concerns about uh, a particular vaccine or, or any of the procedures, as would normally be the case, please discuss that with your normal, normal GP or the vaccine provider that you're going to. Work through those issues with them uh, and come to that agreement uh, in an informed way, uh, including in relation to this new information that came through last week.